Starfield has arrived, and similar to its predecessor Fallout, we have outpost building and automation, and like I suspected, not just the harvesting of materials, but we can also produce more complicated resources. So today we'll start off with the basics of outposts and resource generation, but expect an advanced guide soon, so why not subscribe for more Starfield content? Starting off, outposts can be built on any solid planets and moons. There's no required quest to start you off. Just land on a planet, open your scanner and then hit the R key. This will give you a beacon which can be placed to claim your stake on the ground. To start off with, you will have up to 8 outposts available to you, but with the skill perks, you'll be able to increase this and by the looks of it, maxing out the planetary habitation skill will allow you to build up to 48 outposts, but that will only be for the most industrialist of us. Once you've placed your first beacon, you'll be given options to build various items. There's an assortment of power generators, buildables, decorations and more. You'll also be able to construct resource extractors, which will be dependent on the planet and resources around you. You may also notice that some of these structures have variations which you can pick, such as larger ones or they may have different looks, but none of this is important until you have found a place to build your outpost. So when it comes to choosing a planet, you'll want to consider first and foremost the resources available. We can scan a planet by travelling close to it, then opening up the map menu, clicking the planet and holding down R. Doing so will scan the planet and provide you with a coloured map showing what resources are available. From here we can pick a landing spot where we'll be able to build our outpost. I should also mention, we won't really touch on it much in this video, but there are some planets that aren't going to be available to build outposts on immediately because you'll need the skills to do that, such as planets that have extreme atmospheres, so just be aware of that. Now it is possible to get multiple resources in a single outpost, but it can be difficult finding the perfect spot. However, I can say that the perfect outpost to start off with will have ideally iron and aluminum or aluminium available, but this is incredibly rare. Even rarer is a spot with copper in the same vicinity. Of course, picking the perfect spot is only half the battle. You'll also want to stock up your ship with plenty of iron, aluminium, tungsten, copper, beryllium, as well as a few adaptive frames. This will get you a basic resource gathering setup on the go, but if you do want to make a perfect house then you'll also want at least some lead, sealant and titanium to get you started. Now you can find most of this whilst exploring planets, but have no fear, if that's too time consuming for you, you can buy all of it at the various general stores around the universe. And when it comes to building, you can place the items in first person, or you can use the top down camera by pressing V once you have the build menu out. The top down camera can help get the correct positioning, but personally I find the controls for top down view slightly counterintuitive. Now to place a buildable, you can press E followed by E again. This is placing it and then confirming the position, but do note that you can raise the height of some buildables with the W and S keys after the first time you click E, and if you incorrectly place anything, you can press tab whilst in build mode to modify items. Here you can move items about or delete them. Doing so will return the resource cost of building it. Now for ease, I recommend building in a flat area, so don't venture too far from your landing spot. You'll also find that on planets inhabited by creatures, they may attack your base, so it would be wise to place some turrets. Now I've not played enough of the game to be certain, but it would seem planets that aren't habited by creatures do not need turrets, but who knows, perhaps pirates will attack at some point. Next we'll talk about resource gathering and then basic automation, but make sure to stay throughout the video to make sure you don't miss any of the important information. Also do let me know if you're planning to automate all the resources possible 
and whether you'd like Bethesda to go even further with the outpost building and factory elements of Starfield. Now to harvest a resource, you'll need to f place an extractor on a resource node. These can be found by opening your scanner and resource nodes will be highlighted on the ground with a change in color. You can also open up the build menu, select the extractors and then go to the remote flying view for a better view. However, it would be easier in my opinion if we were able to change the angle of view to being closer to the floor. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have that available. Another th point that I would like to mention is you can have multiple extractors on a single node, but you do have to make sure that they're separated by a fair amount of space. Now, once you've picked a spot for the resource extractors, you'll notice that you lack power. So place down a power generator. Starting off, solar panels work great, but you'll find that you'll need a lot of them to run a larger settlement. There are other generators available, such as wind or I think a fuel generator as well, which produces like 20 power. Pretty good at the cost of fuel. Now, once the solar panels have been placed, you'll notice that the extractors will start to run, filling up with resources. At this point, I recommend building a storage container for the materials. We can then connect the extractor with the container by opening the modify menu and right clicking the extractor. Next, hover your reticle over the container and click E to create the output link. At this point, your resources should be filling the container you've just selected. And at this point, we can look at more advanced automation. But to do that, we'll need to unlock the fabricator, which can be done in the research table. The research table can be placed in the settlement or accessed on your spaceship and will have the outpost tech tree available. Here we can dedicate resources to unlocking the new buildables, such as the fabricator here in manufacturing. But you'll also need to have the associated skills. For example, manufacturing too requires outpost engineering. But before we can unlock that, you'll have to sink eight skill points into the science tree. I should also mention that you can unlock further outpost buildables between the research table and the following skills, zoology, botany and subsequent points in the outpost engineering skills. There may be more skills also that are uh, have buildables associated with them, but I am only 10 hours into the game and yet to reach that. So I will let you know in further vid videos if that's the case. Now, once you've unlocked manufacturing tier one, you'll unlock the simple fabricator, small warehouse module and inter-system cargo links. The simple fabricator allows you to combine two or more basic resources by connecting containers, holding the resources with your fabricator. Uh, you'll then have to send the fabricator's output to a warehouse. As you can see here, we've started producing adaptive frames. And I'll be streaming after this video goes out on twitch.tv forward slash Total Eclipse to produce more advanced items. Now, if you're wondering how to connect resources from one planet to another, such as I've done here, you'll need to place a cargo link at each outpost and connect the resources being sent to that. You can see that it should be connected to the outgoing storage on the cargo link. And from here, we can click the available outpost in this little computer here, and a ship will automatically collect and drop off the resources. At this point, we need to make sure that the cargo arriving in the outpost has an output by creating a connection like we've mentioned prior. Now, if you're bringing resources across systems, you'll need to use the inter-system cargo link, which will use fuel in order to run. And speaking of spaceships, I recommend building a dedicated landing pad for your ship so that you're not running back and forth. Oh, and if you have a particularly large ship, you'll need the landing pad with the ship builder attached to it, which is where you'll also be able to make adjustments to your ship if you want to change it. Now, next time we'll be talking about improving the efficiency of 
your outposts as well as advanced automation. So if you're interested in that, subscribe or get a sneak peek in my daily streams. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our Solar Clips patrons, James Owen, Fireflesh and Treble, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity, Ben, Star and that dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is the Viking Brit. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.